name's Jane Zander, and I want to say thank you to the Purcell Gallery and the Louisa Art Center for offering me an opportunity to display my artworks in this lovely, lovely space. I also want to thank all of the volunteers that made it so easy and so uh, encouraging to be able to be in this gallery and get the works up and everything else. Thank you so very much. I really mean that. Uh, I'm a watercolor artist. Uh, I used to do botanicals, and you'll see a lot of my botanicals uh, in another part of the show. But this is the main gallery, and it kind of tells my story. Um, if you look uh, at this painting, White Peonies, it was my break between botanicals and the larger watercolor. I like drawing big. I like the movement that I get involved with my hands and arms and in drawing. I just love it because, you know, I get involved in a painting by doing it. This one I started as I would a botanical, but I could throw away the little tiny brushes and the, the detail nitpicking, and I just put the essence of the flower down. Uh, the peony is a, they're gorgeous, you know, they just flow. And, uh, and then when I put the background in, I thought, the flowers worked out pretty good. And I was a little bit scared because in botanicals you don't put in a background, but in this one, I thought, okay, I'm going for it. And I put that background in in not that long a time. And it turned out great. You can see that it looks, you know, I've got the buds, I've got the leaves, and it's all there, and it lets you complete the painting. So that, to me, was a lot more fun. It was a lot more, uh, of what I wanted to do art for. I, I can do that draw, I can design, but that was what I wanted to do with the painting. The next, uh, I work in series, and uh, so a lot of it has to do with nature. So not too far away from the botanicals, but I, I was struck by trees, and one of the, this tree here is the uh, mulberry tree in Lewis Gander Garden, and it's in their children's garden, and they have they let kids climb it. And I thought, what a concept. Let kids climb a tree in a botanical garden. And my grandchildren went up, and that's my grandson. You know, he stood there. I call it Catherine's Courageous because he's looking out. But when he came down from there, he says, Grandma, I love that tree. And I went, wow, he's got it. That's that moment when he gets it. That's what nature's about. I love nature. You know, and I, that experience, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. But that's why that was an important uh, moment in my painting and actually in my life. Uh, this tree is one that, you know, there wasn't much left of it, to tell you the truth. Dead branches, you know, uh, been hit by lightning, been dried out, been uh, who knows what, it was along a stream day. So it's probably been flooded and everything else. But look at there's one little branch. It's still surviving, and that's my survivor. And it, it, it called to me, you know. And then this one is kind of on the same thing. It's digging deeper. And when you look, this was desert-like around it. And when you look, though, there's this one tree and these roots on it. I mean, this went down half a mountain. And you think, Wow, you know, it's surviving. I thought that was kind of perfect for right now to be, that's kind of, we're, we survived, we've been through a lot. But this is, I probably, you know, it, it, it moves me because that's, that's what we're doing right now. This tree is similar. It's from the north side of the Grand Canyon and um, it was early morning. And the tree kind of looks, you know, it's one another one of the badly abused trees. And by weather and by everything it could put out. It's got, to save itself, it's got roots almost in branches. It's hanging onto the side of a mountain. And uh, speaks to me. It's, it's a, you know, it's a uh, misty morning. But here this tree is surviving again. 
I do kind of the same with this other series because when you work in a series, it allows you to know things uh, a little better just because you're with them longer. And you now this one, I like the backlighting. Uh, it's reaching up. The roughness. I think the best part of it is the roughness of the of the trunks and the branches. You know, um, it's a moment in time. This one too. Coming up, we were on a mountain trail, coming up, and this tree was huge. And uh, the sun coming from behind it was striking. Same here, kind of the same lighting a little later. But it was, I love the movement, the uh, hidden trees in the background and foreground. Um, one thing I want to tell you right here is I do work from photographs, but usually when I set out my photographs, it's more of a, a storyboard or a montage of things. I cut things that I want to use. I may take a photograph, but something like this, the whole tree trunk's black, or this one, you can't tell. So I take other kinds of, I take many photographs and I'll take some that show it with different kinds of light. And so I'm putting it all together. So when I get done, my photos are only reference. I don't care if it looks like the photograph or it doesn't because the final work comes in what I do and how far I go on the painting uh, to, to bring it forward. So um, I wanted, I wanted, at first I thought, oh, you're not supposed to use photographs, but I don't copy photographs. I use photographs because, you know, I'm not gonna sit on the side of the mountain all day <laughs> being able to draw this or paint it but I'm moved by it, and so I can take a number of photographs and then interpret what I've seen in there and what it means to me. Uh, this is the same thing. You're not going to get a photograph of water that looks like this, except maybe if you're very lucky and you know, drop a boulder in it or something, but this is an essence of splash. Some places I put salt in, so you see bigger uh, areas of, almost look like uh, spots of, water or over here there's real tiny spots of water and I use different layers of paint and paint over it. Some places I'll put a real dark in and, and contrast it with the real squiggly white and then what I'm interested in this is not painting water but painting the feeling of water in different conditions. This one here is whirlpool and kind of the same thing. I This is layers of paint and different um, colors and textures in it. Sometimes I'll wash it in, sometimes I'll put a masking on it and come back over it. But I start with kind of a design that, you know, I've gone from a whole series of pictures and then I modify it. But I'm not against looking at reference materials, but I don't copy. This here is the uh, end tide. It's kind of the moment when the uh, water on the beach starts to pull back and so I think, you know, I'd like to think that's kind of a fun picture. Uh, and I, I laugh because some of these you could turn sideways. There's a lot of my pictures I've always kind of made that you could turn it sideways if you wanted to and hang it from the side because who's going to tell you it's right or wrong? Not me. This one here, by working with water, then I went into different types of water and thinking about how they were similar and different. This is melting snow. Uh, we were at a glacier up in um, Arcadia National Park and the uh, it was it just interests me that it was like the other ones but it was uh, different and it, it was water rushing down through the ditches and so forth it had a lot of silt in it and so forth this one is again frost a uh, different uh, hoarfrost different kind of uh, feeling than you would say with the other waters and this one too. Just, I wanted to get movement, feeling, texture, depth, all the things that artists kind of get to play around with. Um, in fact, this one here is one of the last of my boulders um, because I started to go back into some representationalism, but I did a lot of things. We were on the Alaska coast and took some pictures from the boat and I, 
I uh, enlarged them obviously, and I used other references to what the salmon looked like, but I found it was interesting to see how it eddies at the bottom. I did other things with uh, sea starfish and things that we saw, because I see a lot of times the water, the, the ground is an abstract painting, and that's kind of where I, I get uh, interested in it. This one here is from really uh, Swift Creek Lake. I live near there, and it was an early canoe ride in the morning. A little bit misty like that, but here's my old heron friend sitting on the, the tree that is so ragged and uh, barely surviving in the water. And the other one is from the Allerton Garden in Hawaii, and that's uh, bamboo, and, and it's, it was pretty interesting to see how same some of these things are and how different they are. I mean, some of the movement in this one could be compared to the movement in the water, but I guess that's my style on it, so. This exhibit runs until May 21st, and uh, you can always uh, call uh, the box office to check on times because it's open Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, but they will let you in to see the gallery if you're interested with, with a phone call to make an appointment. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, please look at xanderfineart.com uh, and that's my website. So thank you so much for having me here and it's been a real pleasure.